Hi, this is Risako. Uh, good evening. This is my third video, and today I'm not going to introduce a film, but a different kind of art film, which is No. I went to watch No today at the National No Theatre in Tokyo. A friend of mine is a No actor, and that's why I, once a year or maybe twice a year I go watch her her act. Uh, today I would like to talk about four themes. So one, what is No? Two, the history, brief history. Three the features and four uh, one of the stories of many acts and I'll talk about the one I watched today which is called Midare. So number one, what is No? No is a classical Japanese dance drama uh, according to the Wikipedia translation. No, when you write it in Japanese, kanji. Well, kanji is a type of a, uh, a character which comes originally comes from China. But in its original meaning, it's like skill or talent. From the 14th century, it developed into the current form, which is still active today. There's also a word, nōgaku, and that is different from what I've been saying, no. Nōgaku is no and kyōgen. Kyōgen is another kind of act. The length is shorter, they don't have any masks, which I will explain later, and Currently, in between the no acts, there are some kyōgen, so it's kind of like a set. So, number two, the history, the brief history. In 6th century or so, some kind of dance drama was imported from China, and then it was developed somehow into the current uh, original Japanese form. In the 14th century, um, in the Muromachi era, was the time when it was developed into the current form. Muromachi era is from 1336 to 1573, but at the beginning, the capital moved from Kamakura to Kyoto. Kamakura is like an hour drive away from current Tokyo. The capital was at Kamakura at the seaside then, but then it moved to Kyoto. And at the time that the shogunate was a fond of no, and that's why it became into a courtly art form. Especially the shogunate um, Ashikaga Yoshimitsu was really f fond of this no actor called Zeami, and that's how um, Zeami and his son, oh, Zeami and his father Kanami developed it into the current present form. When it became the Edo era, which is from the 17th century, no remained a a kind of art form for wealthy and sophisticated classes. Uh, whereas kabuki and jōruri, which is another form of Japanese dance drama, was rather for the middle class. Uh, after the Meiji period, which is from the 19th century, when Japan started opening its country to the Western and other foreign countries, the number of the no actors diminished largely. But after that, the government realized it had to protect it as a, as a traditional art form. And for example, in 1983, the National No Theatre was built, which I visited today. And from 2008, it was registered into the UNESCO Intangible Cultural Heritage. So number three, features. I'd like to talk about three main features, mask, theme, and uh, movement. So mask. Even Japanese people, they don't have a lot of opportunities to go watch No, but they know it's like one of those art forms where you put a mask on. Uh, these are called omen um, in Japanese, and they are made into different faces. Well, I'll talk about the theme together, but because the theme of these No are mainly about the ordinary people who lived in the 12th to 16th century, these omen masks are also made to act the ordinary people. So for example, an old man or a young woman, demons, ghosts, maybe they aren't ordinary people, but these demon and ghosts are said to be human as well, but because of their really strong emotions, they are changed into demons or ghosts. Another example, what I watched today is a monkey, a monkey and a fairy or snakes, and that, that kind of animals are also common as well. The no actors use only one mask mainly to show different emotions. For example, if they have a, a young woman's face and if they're laughing, they might look a, a bit like above. And when they're sad and crying, they might look down. And when they're angry, um, they might shake their head like this or maybe cry like this. Well, they use one omen 
mask to show different emotions and that's what I think is um, one of the really interesting parts of Noor. And lastly, one of the features is the movement. So uh, Noor is acted by really highly trained actors. Uh, many of them are trained as Noor actors since they are a child. The feature of Noor is the really slow movement and slow talking but sometimes it goes really fast. Within one song the rhythm might change dramatically and even though their movements are really slow um, when you watch them carefully you can see that they're really using their muscles. They might be, they might be bending their knees all the time to walk. Um, they don't walk like this, they walk like this and um, it's really um, important to them to, to have their nerve to the end of their, their hands and foot and like, take care of every move movement they're doing. So that's the feature of Noor. So number four, finally, I'm going to introduce one of the stories. So Midale, which I watched today. So this is the, the poster of, of today. So this is the mask that I explained earlier. And uh, okay, I'll first read the the story in Japanese and then talk about it in English. Midare, Yosuko no hotori, yume no tsuge de sake o uri. Kuki no mi to natta wakamo no kofu. Soko e shoujo to yu yose ga araware, sake o non dewa mai o mai, kume to mo tsuki nai sakatsubo o atairu no datta. So, uh, the protagonist of the story is a young man called Kofu. He dreams the stream um, that he is told that if you sell this alcohol um you will become rich forever and and then there's this monkey fairy uh which is shoujo in japanese well we don't use this word anymore in the modern japanese but uh, this uh, monkey fairy is dancing singing uh, dancing singing drinking um the monkey is of course tipsy, not maybe tipsy but actually drunk and um, this monkey gives this young man a vase of alcohol that is bottomless. Well, when he wakes up from his dream he finds this a vase in front of him. He does what he was told in his dream so he sells this and then he uh, becomes rich and his family uh, lives happily forever. So this is really a kind of a, a, a good happy story. Even it's in Japanese, it's completely different from what we use and talk today. Like most of the parts, we can't really understand what they're saying, only partially. So there was this explanation um, beforehand, and uh, the, the man explained to us, depending on the, the act, the number of the monkeys changes. There's only two, there's like maybe five, I don't remember, but sometimes there are like nine when the the limited amount of space on on, on the theatre is re really uh, crowded. And so today there were two monkeys and there's my friend and she has a, a little brother who is a, a no actor as well. So these two um, acted as the two monkeys and um, and did the dance and uh, they, they have this uh, monkey mask and also red hair that goes down to their back and they're really fancy um, kimono which is the, the Japanese dress in gold and silver and all these flowers and really fancy good kimono. They, they were beautiful and as I explained before, no usually has this really slow movement, this kind of animal and also because it has a happy theme, um, it was a very light and active kind of movement so it was very enjoyable to our I eyes. I think no well. and maybe kabuki and other traditional art forms as well. Well, some people really enjoy these of course but for many of us, it feels like we are not sophisticated enough to go watch one of these. I was lucky enough to have a no actor, um, which I think is a really rare thing, so that's the reason I go watch. But uh, when you, And you hear the story, it has jokes in it, and it's really enjoyable. And you can feel it more familiar than you think it is, and you haven't seen it yet. So, so it makes me feel that I want to experience more of Japanese culture, which... 
I think maybe it might be too difficult for me but once you try it, it may not, um, I could, I may enjoy it and not only Japanese culture but um, for any kind of culture I, I would love to be open to. So okay, so I hope you enjoyed this a uh, little bit um, different video from usual and see you next time. Bye!